Hi, it's James from Affinity. I'll take you through some smaller quality of life improvements that I've implemented in Affinity for this first major release. These are predominantly focused around image editing and compositing. First, there are some small changes to the selection refinement functionality. I'll make a selection of this wolf, then open the Refine Selection dialog. And I'll quickly brush around the edges to map them. Now, if you previously used V2 or V1, you might wonder where the new layer output options on the combo box have gone. You now access these by enabling color decontamination. It wasn't made clear previously, but the new layer options performed decontamination of the edge color detail, whereas using selection or mask didn't. The distinction is now clearer because you explicitly enable decontamination using this option. Furthermore, if you use one of the matte previews, or the transparent preview, you'll now see an accurate representation. So this is without decontamination, and this is with decontamination. Next up is auto sharpening when developing RAW files. One of the common complaints about RAW development in Affinity Photo was the lack of clarity or detail, and this was mainly down to the fact that no sharpening was being applied, whereas other RAW developers do apply sharpening by default. Now, in this new version, sharpening is applied by default. The amount is slightly determined by the resolution of the image, so higher resolutions will receive marginally stronger sharpening. You can configure this option by accessing the Develop Assistant settings using this button here. Light sharpening is used by default, but you can choose moderate or strong sharpening instead, or opt to disable it completely if you wish to apply your own sharpening. Next, there's a small alteration to how you create raster selections from layers in that you can now subtract selections as well. On macOS, you can hold Command and click a layer thumbnail to make a raster selection of it. You can also add Shift alongside Command and click other layer thumbnails to add them to the selection. A new behavior is that you can now hold Option and Command, then click layer thumbnails to remove them from the selection. This was previously the key combination for a luminosity selection. That's now been moved to Shift Option Command click. For Windows, you substitute Command for Control and Option for Alt. We didn't ship many adjustment presets with V1 or V2 of Affinity Photo, so now in this version we're shipping a few more. The adjustment panel can be shown by going to the Window menu, then the Pixel category. Alternatively, it's also shown by default in the Color Grading Studio, which you can enable and switch to up here. There are now more presets available for most adjustments. I could apply a few of these. For example, Dodge in the Brightness Contrast category, Golden Yellows in the Selective Color category, and Matte Black in the Curves category. Another small but useful improvement is the ability to use Merge Selected on a wide range of layer content. Now you can merge raster content, vector content, adjustments, live filters, text, and more into one pixel layer. For example, I can select the bottom diamond layer, then hold Shift, and select all these layers. I can then use Merge Selected on the right-click menu to take all of these layers and merge them into one layer. The two exclusions for this functionality are linked layers and linked text frames. If your layer selection contains either of these, the Merge Selected option will be disabled. Next up, Pixelate is now available as a live filter. This lets you apply a pixelation effect non-destructively, so you can easily experiment with it. For example, I could apply a blend mode, like Darken, then change the quantization parameter and see the effect in real time. Or I could do something more radical, like use the Difference Blend Mode, group the live filter, then set the group's blend ranges in a way that blends through the brighter detail. This creates a blocky artifacting effect. And of course, I can still go in and change the quantization at any time. 
Finally, I'll look at studio switching based on file type. This doesn't apply to Affinity documents, but rather the opening of interchange file types like JPEG, TIFF, PDF, SVG, and so on. These various file types fall into categories of bitmap, vector, and layout, and will open in the most appropriate studio by default. So if I open a JPEG file, for example, it will switch to the Pixel Studio. However, if I then switch to another studio before making any changes to the document, it will then set that studio as the default for bitmap files. I'll enable compositing up here and switch to it as an example. I'll get a notification telling me the default studio for bitmap files has changed to compositing. Now, if I close this document, switch to another studio, then open any other bitmap file, such as this TIFF file, it will switch to the compositing studio. Again, if I don't do anything to the document, thus retaining an empty undo history, I can switch to another studio immediately if I want to change the default studio. However, if I do start working on the document, such as adding a white balance adjustment here, then I try and switch studios, it will no longer change the default studio. I'll demonstrate the behavior again, this time with a PDF. This qualifies as a layout file, so it switches to the layout studio by default. But again, I can change this default studio if I want, perhaps to typography. This behavior also works with raw files in a slightly different way. If I open a raw file, I'll be taken to the develop studio, where I can make various adjustments. Then, once I'm finished, I can click Develop, and at this point I'll be taken to the Pixel Studio by default. However, let's say I want to go straight to another studio, like perhaps retouching. Without making any changes, if I immediately switch into another studio, that will now be set as the default for RAW files once they are developed. So I could close this document, switch to another studio, then open up a different RAW file. I'll be taken to develop as expected, but when I click the develop button, I'll then be taken to the retouching studio. And you don't even need the studio exposed on the studio menu up here for it to function. If you don't want this studio switching behavior, you can just disable it entirely by going to settings and toggling switch studio based on file type. Anyway, that was some quick coverage of a few quality of life improvements that might otherwise go unnoticed. There are plenty of exciting new features and functionality to discover in Affinity, and I'll be covering some of them in videos like these. Thank you for watching.